Hi, I'm John Cerruto, and welcome to Milburn High School. We're here at Milburn for the Paul Finn Dual Meets. I'm being joined here by Bob Keenan, the former head coach of the Livingston Lancers and currently the vice principal of Milburn High School. That's coach correct. Keenan, welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's a great day. Great day of wrestling. So for sure. The Paul Finn Duels are exciting. Bob, uh, six-team field, some of the teams that are joining us this year. Sure, we have uh, Newark Academies here, Woodridge joins this year, you got Livingston coming in, wrestle against obviously Milburn, it's going to be really exciting. Okay, and you and I are going to have an opportunity to do the Milburn-Livingston match, and you're in a unique position because you being the former head coach at Livingston, you work with some of those boys, you come to the wrestling room here in Milburn, what type of match are we looking for today? I think we're going to see a lot of, couple good, really good individual matches. There's a couple matchups that are really exciting to watch. I'm not sure how well the teams are going to balance up against each other, but we're going to have some really exciting matches. Well, 17th year of the Finn Duels, and we've seen it evolve over the years. At one point, it was a larger field. Uh, we used to give out some camp scholarships. We've, we've really kind of pulled it in more of a narrow type field, local. Uh, but we still do some very nice things, and we're all going to get uh, shirts today, all the participants, and we're going to watch a video. That's great. No, this is an exciting tournament. I've been to it for a few different years. What I'm excited about right now is it's a lot more local. There's a little local feeling to it. The teams are from the area. The people are from the area, and it's exciting to to talk about Paul Finn in a, in a community setting as opposed to from all over the state where they have no idea who Paul Finn is. So I'm excited about this. And Paul, just for the viewing audience, uh, Paul Finn was a New Jersey State champion. It was before they capped the weight, of course, and he was a big guy, and they call him the gentle giant because he was extremely physical but always kind to his opponents, even though he wrestled 28 his senior year in high school and pinned all 28 and became the state champion. Yeah, no, it, it's a great legend for people to learn about here, and it's a, a great way for people to understand the sport of wrestling through a tournament like this and what how it brings people together. No well, one here knew Paul Finn, but we're all here. Yeah, but they understand his spirit. Yeah. So, Coach Keenan, we're looking for a good match, and if things work out, maybe you and I can finish it off. Going for 113 pounds, and for Milburn, Jason Quirk Livingston. For Milburn, it's going to be Griffin Geller at 113, and for Livingston, Jason Quirk. Jason Quirk. And Bob Livingston just finished their match. They uh, had a tough match over there with Raritan. Lost. Milburn beat North Academy in their first match. Yeah, so Livingston's gonna have to regroup quickly. It was a pretty good loss for them, so they're gonna have to come back. They're starting right away. We have two brothers in a row here. Jason and Sean, freshman. Geller from Milburn's a sophomore. Boys look evenly matched right now. Feeling each other out, trying to figure out what they can do. Got a recaller there. Traditionally, people collar each side. He reaches over and recollars him. It slows, it creates difficulty for the other wrestlers. Well, as you said, Bob, they're looking to try to create an opening, and they see that quick opening, and they make their move. Here, the coach is telling the circle, create angles. And he's nice front headlock. Circles around, gets his points. Jason Quirk with a 2-0 lead. Milburn building his base, trying to work his way out, trying to score that one, get off the bottom. Quirk's trying to tie him up, get him to his back. Now, Bob, listen, I know that you have a little history here with Livingston. You're the former head coach, outstanding head coach, and now the vice principal, as mentioned here in Milburn. But you work with a lot of these kids. And is there a team style that Livingston has? Their style right now is really just keep going. They keep, they work hard every day and they're just looking for six minutes out of their guys. They have no one move that they try, they have no one thing. You know, the kids have their style, but they expect them to work for six straight minutes. That's really Coach Cuneo's philosophy. Cork will defer. Gonna choose bottom, Milburn's gonna choose bottom. 
So Griffin Geller will take the bottom. And you know, Coach Lombardi said last year he worked very hard with his wrestlers in the defensive position. It's called the out. optional start. He's going to let him up. So we didn't get to see that defense they've been working on. He let him right up. He wants to work on his feet. Feels confident there. Again, the over collar. Takes away the other boy's collar tie. Trying to set up his own shots. Quirk with the outside has an opportunity to shrug, which he did. Staying very aggressive. Staying nice single. The two right there at the edge of the mat. He worked his way up. And you know, it goes to what you said about the six minutes, Bob. There was constant movement there by Quirk. Just a freshman. He's gonna let him up again, it looks like. He's going optional start. Up. Jumps to the front, looking for a big move. Yes, he is. Cement job. He might have it. He must have saw something we didn't, but that's a nice move. Very nice. Very physical. Very, very nice. And he gets job. the pin. Six points on the board for Livingston with a fall. That's what he thinks of him. He's got a bright future. Yes. We, we move up, coach. We go up to 126 pounds. It's on court. His brother Sean. Policarpio. Michael Policarpio. This looks to be a good match, we hope. We have a county place winner, second place in the county from Milburn. And we've got an up and coming freshman from Livingston. Policarpio, third in the districts last year. As you just mentioned, a runner up in the county tournament. This should be a good bout. Again, we'll see them feel each other out at first, trying to look for those angles. Michael, a junior. Nice long build. Nice single. Similar to his brother, he goes right to the leg attack. As you mentioned, Paul Carpio is long, so he has a nice defense. He's trying to extend the man and allow him to get that leg. Looking for the stalemate here, Coach. Policarpio would like to get a stalemate and get a fresh start. Sean Quark. Sh Sean's, Sean's going to keep trying to work his way and get his head up. Got to go back door here, right, Coach? He, he yeah, wants the goal arch. when you're down there is to get higher. Right now, Policarpio is higher, so he's keeping control. Okay, no points. That was a fast two. It was a fast two. That felt like yeah, a fast two. There's really action did. going on. Yeah. So we're going in 0 0. Paul Carpio starts on bottom. Milburn's coached by uh, Mark. Say that again, I'm sorry. I felt like it was one minute. Well, we felt the same way. We're the clock's over there. Yeah, we, yeah coaches from Livingston are saying that was a quick period, it's, also, coach. I think there may have been an error there. Surprised it wasn't picked up by the coaching staff. They can't see the clock as well, but if you look at the angles of the clock, yeah. the coaches don't get a good look at it. Melbourne's coached by Mark Lombardi, he's assisted by Garrett Marin, uh, and of course Al Martino, who's a volunteer coach. Nice group of guys working together. What we missed during that was a quick escape. It's 1 0 for Paul Carpio. Good single. Needs to finish Trying it. Trying not to go on the mat this time. He goes on the mat. Paul Carpio's had an advantage. Bob, give me, give me a couple finishings. What can he do, Quirk, when he gets that single? Just like I said before, he needs to get his head up and come up. The more he stays down, the more advantage it gives to him. When you get in a down position, you got to bring your head up and get your weight on him. Right now. He has to get himself up. And Paul Carpio keeps wanting to get his hip down and scoot around. He's getting his head up and driving, trying to drive through, crawl up. He's going to get his two. A hard point two. Keep him flat out of your toes. Still got 30 seconds left. He needs to try to turn him. Bottom guy needs to try to get up. Wrestling, they make sure both stay active or they can get hit or stolen. 
Michael Paul Carpenter has got to hit a move here. Cut. It looks like he's working to the zone out. Arm up. He got fights one. his way out. He gets one. He checks the clock to see his time. It's 2 2. Quirk goes right back in on a shot. This time trying to keep his head up. We're awful close here to the coaching staff. Coach Oakland. People can hear us. No two at the edge. Coach is looking for two. It's a close call. 2 2 going in the next period. Bob, one thing that's impressed me here with both these quirks. No matter what happens, they're right back in. There's never a period to relax against them. And I think Michael just let up for a split second, and uh, Sean went right in and had an opportunity to take him that back, take those points back. You're, I would say you're absolutely right about that. These guys are keep working. You can see that third period, maybe starting to get the quirk a little bit on bottom. He's trying to figure out and get himself out. Paul Carpio's tough on top. He's long, he rides hard. Keeps his weight on you. See how he's squared up on the hips, keeps all that weight on. Perk scooting his hips out. Oh, this is turning into the match that we said it might be. Yep. Man on top has to work for the fall. He's out to the side trying to work for the fall, but breaking his hips down. Ed Quinn is the official. Ed Quinn is the official coach, Keenan. And oh, it looks wait, like scoot it out. He might have one. He's close to one. He's got one neutral. That puts Sean up three-two with 50 seconds to go. See if he stays on his. All right. So Michael Polakarpa has got to get aggressive here. Yes, he needs to take down now. He needs to take down. Kirk shouldn't change his style too much though. It gets you in trouble. He, sh he shouldn't go cautious. He's got to stay the way he wrestled the whole time, or he'll give something up. That's a good point. He's got to stay to his style. Take down but with an ice. It is up to Paul Carpio to get something going. Quinn's backing a bit though. He could yeah. get hit with a warning. He's got to get pushed out of bounds. Warning. He gets hit with stolen, just as you said. He's got to wrestle for the last 14 seconds. He's already been warned that could tie it up if he backs up. Go hard now. Good. Shot by Paul Carpio. Kirk still defending. He's got to work his way in. He's going to go out of bounds again. They're going to call it. He circles him in, trying to avoid the call. Takes a shot. Looks for that dump as the bugger goes off. Nice match. Kirk won a hard fought 3 2 match. Nice match. Both Very boys. Very good match. 3 2. Kirk is the winner from Livingston. Check and in. Michael Petrillo. This is Michael Petrillo. Grant Sanders will check in. Thank you. 126 pounder Grant Sanders. Michael Petrillo is a senior, just recently dropped down to 126 pounds. Sanders is only Sanders a, freshman. a freshman. Yeah. Now, Bobby, have you had an opportunity to be in the Milburn practice room at all this year? I, I actually worked with Grant a little in the off season. I go to the Mil into the Milburn room in the off season. During the season, I'm going to volunteer at Livingston, so I get to see all these guys. I spent time with Grant. I've worked with both these boys, actually. And how long has Grant been wrestling? He's been wrestling since middle school. And uh, he's come through the, the Milburn program. And Michael Petrillo, same thing, coming from the Livingston program since he's young. Banged his head a little on that match. I, he did what we missed there in the action was Sanders tried to throw a headlock. He defended it and rolled through. So Petrillo's up 2-0. Sanders on bottom. Sanders is strong, still a little green in terms of varsity experience. But he's never out of it because he can throw headlocks, as you saw. Sometimes he catches them. He's strong. Great equalizer, the headlock. Petrillo was poised and looking for Wrist and half. Blair. Wrist and half. Trying to throw that pen. Hips got up, so he got some Sanders fights out. A little drag. Sanders works his way out for one, it's 4 1. So you'll see that there's a lot of scrap in Sanders. Again, a freshman. Stays composed. Patrol new down to this weight, trying to get his legs underneath him. Bob, let's. Oh, a little bit too easy there. 
in experience. There's, there's, that, there. there's the headlock. Now, Bob, what do you have to do? You just can't grab a guy's head with both no, hands. Yeah, right you? now, he, it's almost an illegal headlock there. You have to have the arm in circle. He looked like he went right around the head. Coaches are imploring Patrol to stand his leg attacks, knowing full well that Sanders is going to keep looking up top. Nice two point yep. circle behind. Like to remind Get the pressure on him from behind. He's going to go for that wrist again. Maybe look for a half. Right now he's got his, what's called the cheap half. He reaches over the shoulder, looking to tilt. He can't get enough to get the tilt yet. Ref saying he doesn't have enough. There's your angle. Getting his points, getting his counts now. This is where you look to score points and then regroup and look to go to. Yes, tough, to, solid tough to pin somebody from that, That's from that tilt. But, but he, you get your points. But he picked up quick two points before the buzzer. All right, so Milburn will take the. I think coach wants him in the deferring now. Coach warning Patrol to stay away from those headlocks. Patrol is choosing down, up 8-1. Yeah. See Sanders is strong, he's trying to get his hips controlled. Patrol works his way out. Talk, talk to us about setups here, Bob. Well, what we're seeing here is that Patrol's getting a little aggravated just going straight forward, not doing his setups. What you need to do is create that angle, get him the steps so he can take attack. He's going straight on, and he's going right into this guy's game. And as a senior, getting frustrated that he can't do what he wants. Right. But Sanders is tough, and he's not going to just give you what you want. Right. But what, so you're say, what you're saying that. is, even though Sanders is a freshman, Patrillo can get away with it today, but against a more seasoned wrestler, he'll struggle with it. Absolutely, if he doesn't just keep with his technique. The coaches tell him to throw the navy. You see that leg crossed there. They want him to lift that up, bring him to his back. Oh. And he does. Follows their instructions. Should get some back points out of that. They just want him to stay composed, do the moves he knows to do, and not try anything silly. Petrillo's having a nice season right now, right, Coach? Yes. He uh, struggled a little in the county tournament, but now that he's dropped down a weight, he's been winning most of his matches. And a pin. And now we get a pin. This thing goes up 15 nothing over Milburn. Courtesy of the Quirks. Yeah. Thank you. So we got Joey Waldman from Milburn, right? Joe Waldman from Milburn, you are right, coach. And Zach Vera from Livingston. 132 pounds. Vera, Wal Vera Waldman's was, a senior. What do you yes. have with, with, with Vera? Vera's a sophomore, wrestled 106 last year. Actually, up from 26. Pachula dropped down. He's been pushed up. Probably weighs 130 pounds. Experience, again, has got to go to Waldman. Scrappiness, again, this kid's going to keep coming at you. Look to set something up. Waldman definitely has a lot of experience. Waldman's a four-year letter winner. See him going down on a leg attack, but Waldman defends well. Trying to turn the corner there with Waldman. Trying to put a front headlock in. Extend the opponent, get your front headlock in and circle behind. That's what he's looking to do. Vera's controlling the elbow to try to keep him from going behind. Oh. Nice, nice counter to that front head to get that takedown. Again, what we talked about before, they're just gonna keep coming at you. And they certainly have. But now Milburn's gonna get to their base and get up off the mat and get some movement going. Yeah, he's looking to get his hips up underneath him. Trying to set up a roll. What types of things go on in the practice room in Livingston that keeps that aggressive behavior? They do a lot of live wrestling. They honestly do. I, I, I've been in the room a few times and, and there's live wrestling every day. Even the day before the match, they're going to do live wrestling. They believe that's how you get better and they challenge each other. They move them around the room. It's not the same partners all the time. A lot of shots, Bob, a lot of long-term wrestling. What, what, is it's, it? it's, it's a, a lot. Uh, that's a great question. It's a big mixture. 
They'll do position wrestling. They'll do straight six-minute matches. They'll do threes where you rotate in, take down the winner, and shark bait, they call it. So they'll do a lot of different things to keep that aggressiveness and that wrestling going. Well, it certainly has been effective because it's transferred into the match and into these wrestlers. Coach Lombardi's doing a nice job. Man. He's still working on technique with these guys. He's got young groove, a lot of inexperience, and he's trying to get them to understand technique. Well, you know, we had a chance to talk to Mark Lombardi before the match, and uh, why don't we cut to that right now and get those comments about what he's done in the practice room. Well, we're joined with the outstanding coach of the Milburn Millers, Mark Lombardi, in his second year. And Coach Lombardi, a lot of good things happening with your team this year. Yep, uh, we're continuing to build the numbers. Last year, we got the numbers up into the 20s. Now we're in the mid-high 20s, uh, filling the weight classes. That was one of my goals when I got the job last year. So, and uh, we got some freshmen in the lineup, which are everyday learning. Uh, our 106 pounder Gideon is a freshman. Uh, Grant Sanders at 126 is a freshman. And they're getting better every day. Well, you also, Mark, have some seasoned veterans that are back, and why don't you talk about a couple of those? You have a district place winner yeah, who also placed in the counties this year, uh, and you have some other guys that are coming in with some nice experience. Yep. So at 120, we have Michael Policarpio, who as a freshman placed third in the district. In the uh, a couple weeks ago, he was second in the county, and he's having a really nice season. Uh, and again, getting better every day, which we're, which we're happy with. Uh, Captain Sam Cohen is another one who was uh, third in the district last year at 152. He's back doing nicely. He plays in the county also. Uh, Liam Haggerty at 182 was fourth in the district last year. He's only a junior, so we got him for this year and next year. And um, uh, Travis Green is another one who's doing great at 138, placed in the counties, getting better every day, and they're, they're really enjoying it. So, Coach, what are some of the things that you're doing and seeing in the practice room this year that you couldn't do last year because of the inexperience, now that the team's going to the next level? Yeah. Uh, one thing we've worked on a lot this year is the bottom, getting out from bottom. I noticed last year we had a lot of problems getting out from bottom, so we spend a lot of time on that this year. Uh, top wrestling, too. It's different than when we were around. When we were around, a lot of the, on the feet. Now the top game is very, very important. So definitely, I spent more time working on top. More bar arms, Mark, from the top. Cradles. What are you looking for? Uh, Coach Rodriguez left these guys with a great foundation for cradles. So we kept that going. He did a great job teaching the cradle. We've been uh, known for cradles in the last couple of years, and we've built on that. Uh, uh, also, half Nelson, Cradle, uh, and they're doing really well with that. Yeah, you know, I did notice in, in your first match, we saw a lot of wrist and half running that half. Yes, yeah, and defending the half. You know, uh, a lot of these teams like half Nelson, so we've had to learn how to defend the half, which is a lot of strength, so we're trying to get their strength up also. Well, we'll look forward to watching this Livingston Milburn match, and we'll maybe we'll have an opportunity to talk afterwards. Yeah, it's been exciting. We have two new teams also this year. We, uh, Raritan, who has a, a great tradition of the last 10, 15 years, one of the top teams in the state, and Woodridge was able to join us. They have a great coach, Ken Harrison, who was a state champion uh, back in 1989, and he's going to build a nice team there. Good. Excellent. Now we're back here, and Bear has chosen to go on bottom. He wants to try to score. Waldman's going to look to control him, hopefully get a turn on top. Is his plan. He's long. He can cross face. Controlling Bear's ankle to keep him in position, and then he's going to come back, regroup, and try to work his own moves. With that length, I'm sure he's looking for some kind of cradle, you think? I would agree. Cross-face cradle is something Milburn has done well for many years, so I'm sure he's looking for something with that. I actually had the opportunity to work with Joey Waldman a little in the offseason. He came to a couple off-season practices, works hard, likes to learn new technique. Solid kid. Now, Bob, I know you have some of these boys over to the house. You have a mat down in your basement. You know, the coach you've used never left. I think once you're a coach like that, you're always a coach, even though you're the vice principal today. So what types of things, when you work one-on-one, -on -one, is, it, is it just a short technique, drill? Is it for one move at a time, or is it a series of moves? It's, what we do is, it, we have, I have a pattern that we all work on. What they do at the beginning is we do a lot of footwork. Pick that up from John Smith and you look at Oklahoma, and we do a lot of footwork at the beginning. They'll spend 15 minutes on footwork. Then we'll drill techniques that they normally do, and then we'll go over their mistakes in matches. Now, speaking of which, Waldman held on a little long, and now Vera's got him on his back. Well, Vera sensed the half really nicely. He came right up and attacked the head. And He's got to regroup to get that half. 
Walden does a nice job of fighting it off. He's turning his head, getting his hips underneath him, just as you would be taught to do, He's trying to build his base. Now Here. Barrett trying to keep way on top. Period's winding down. It's going to be four nothing, seven nothing. Vera. You got those back points. Got the back points. Now he's working the cross face. Right now, going to third period. Bob, right now, with the bouts that we have watched, Livingston is just more physical than Melbourne. I would agree. And I, one thing I'd like to point out is I think that that in the curve right now, Livingston is a few years ahead. Coach Cunha took over a few years ago, and he was in the same position Coach Lombardi's in now. Good point. And as, as this progresses, you're going to see some of the same things. You see the numbers have changed in Milburn, right? You see these guys around doing technique. They just can't quite get it yet. Livingston's, like I said, a year or two ahead of them. Yes, really good point, where they are in the process. That is correct. They're both building programs that have had a lot of success in the past, and they're both in a rebuilding phase. Staying aggressive on top, looking to turn again. It's funny, I look at Livingston, the bar arms, Under. wrist in half. Things that Jerry Saxel probably taught you. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's ironic, Bob, you hang around this sport long enough, you see some changes, but the core of the sport remains the same. You know, it's, it's just a grit, tough, basics. You, you, leave this, you could leave for a couple years, come back and hear the coaches yelling the same things that were yelled a few years before True. about positioning, about certain techniques. People don't understand, Bob, and why don't you explain how important your hip positioning is in this sport? That's a great question. If, the, the, if you can clear your hips on the bottom, then you're going to be able to get out. The guy on top's got to be able to control those hips, keep them flat so he can work the turn. So both guys are going against each other that way. Your hips are ex extremely important, especially when you're wrestling on the mat, getting yourself off or controlling. See, right now they're squared up, so the advantage is to the man on top. Waldman needs to get his hips off to the side so he can sneak out. For sale in the hallway. Which is what he's trying to do now. Pizza for sale in the hallway. Thank you. Only a few seconds left in this match. Looks like Livingston's going to get a major decision. And they are. They'll Another. pick up four more points. They get 19 nothing Livingston. Another well-wrestled, hard-fought match, though. Yes, yes. You know, this is going to be one of those matches that the score may not be indicative of what we're seeing on the mat. There's a lot of tough wrestling going on. Check in. Tyler Stolfi from Livingston. Travis Green. Travis Green. Travis from Milner. Travis Green, a senior. Tyler Stolfi a junior. Travis placed in the county. Uh, Stolfi did not. Seventh. They're at the same. I think they're. 138, right, Bob? Yeah, they're, both at the, they're both at the same weight they were at the county tournament. That's what I was trying to see. And. Uh, Stolfi's been coming along lately, scoring his takedowns. Previous match he won. Travis is re really good defense and great on top with his legs. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. So he takes advantage for that long line. Yes, for sure. Both of them again, as we said earlier, feeling each other out. Bob, but as much as this is so physical on these boys, and they're young, their bodies recover very quickly, I mean, do you advise some kind of strength work during the season too, or is it just strength that comes naturally through practice? Well, I can tell you that in Livingston, they have a pretty good strength program in the off season, and they continue with an in-season strength program. We Honestly, we did that, we did that, we brought that in years ago when I was still coaching there, and they've kept it up. They come in two, day, two mornings a week to lift, mostly just to maintain what they worked on off season. And uh, I think it pays off in the long run. Now, you it's know, a very difficult thing to do. It is, but when you're so young like this, your body responds quickly. So it's wise to do strength work because you're going to be a lot stronger come February than you were in December. And you sustain your stamina. Nice shot. Tyler takes a nice shot, creates an angle, takes a nice outside shot. Stolfi trying to square his hips up to keep pressure on him. 
back door. Comes up, get head up like we talked about before. The man with the head up. Well, what am I going to do here? Am I gonna, am I going to pop and pop on the knee and twist? That's what he should do. Stolfi caught his arm, he and now Stolfi's looking to just, as we've seen in some earlier matches, maybe hope to get a stalemate, not give it up. And Travis is looking to get that takedown with minimal time left. Not much time. He's got to crowd him quickly in turn, and he's not going to finish it. Great little series there for both guys. Really is. Nice shot. Coach imploring him to cut the corner on those shots and score off them. Still, he'll be down to start this period. Travis uh, is an experienced wrestler, coach. Took third in the Carney tournament in 2019. Kept his composure very nice. Caution. Yeah, he's looking to bump him forward. He's probably going to try to throw those legs in. He's been yeah, very successful coming. with his legs. I'm sure Trophy's aware of it. There they go, the boot's in. Coach implored him to shake him off. He lost that opportunity and now stretching him out. He's gonna go to work with what he does best. Throws Extend him, work a power half. And that doesn't feel real good, does it, Bob? No. Feel the bob bottom. That's a lot of pressure. And again, his length is an advantage, keeping all that hip pressure. Still be trying to build his hips up. He keeps the pressure in on his hips. And that pressure is weight. And yes. carrying that weight wears you down, flattens you down. You may ride like this for a minute before you can actually turn him, but the bottom man is bearing all that weight, as you said. And it takes a lot out of him, and it might show up later on in the match, and that's the nice thing about having legs. Something I can never do, Bob. I don't know about you. Were you a leg wrestler much? I was not a leg wrestler. Yeah. Never felt comfortable with the men. And never felt comfortable when someone had him in. Oh, he's working this power half very nicely. He might break the plane this time. Not getting a count yet. Oh, looks like he backed out of it again. The goal is to get him to turn his back to the point where he's gonna start getting back points. He's built his base back up again, making this turn a little harder. But as you said, he's wearing him down. Oh, Mr. Stokes. Now, might have to, now he gave up the... That's the two. Broke the plane. Yep. But what is the he's degree on that, Bob? It's a, it's a Past the 90. Same count though, because he didn't get the full count the last time. This is not additional points, he's trying for the three as opposed to the two. Same move, so he's not gonna get points again. He thought he could get points again by letting it go. Right, so you have to he's break the move. He's still holding the points. Has to be a new move. Yep. Three nothing though, he picked up three but he'll, points in the offensive position. Now he's getting a new count. Coach is imploring that he has it. I thought he did break the move, didn't you, it was Coach? The, it it seems like it, because he came up to show his hands were. No, he didn't. He's still at the right seat. And all he's doing is come back and come back. But it's got to be out of danger. He's not out of danger there. We have a little blood timeout, Bob. So got, it's, it's good to hear coaches. Getting a little chat about yeah, this. Yeah, getting a little bit They're invested. The confusion is that Coach Cuneo believes that the legs were in and that that should be enough, and that he never really came out of danger. But what Green did well was actually take his hands off and show, that, look, I'm letting him go. So we're picking it up again here after a blood timeout, five nothing. Five nothing, he scored five back points on top, and now he's chosen top again. So Travis is looking to continue with his ride on top. You know those legs are coming, coach, there they are. And you're right, Travis Green has them in. They're looking to score more points, possibly get to a major or better. Tyler again trying to build that base and fight these legs off. His best bet was the initial move. It's tough now. And this is where you're going to see how he, the feeling of being worn down yes. is going to start to show. What Reed he did went last right year. back to what he did. He got it much quicker this period because, as you said, it's a little harder. Staying with that power half. Stretching it out, I think Called he'll pick up two, two, three. Three and now another We have blood, blood again. Time. Coach, Travis Green's gonna throw those legs again. Looking to throw them again, and Stolpe's looking to avoid that, trying to come up to avoid the legs. Nice mat return by Stolpe. I mean, like, Green and Stolpe still coming right back up, trying to avoid that position. But Green again throws that leg in. Nice little flurry we had there, both guys working hard. What 
Tyler needs to do is kick his legs up and kick that leg off. He's trying to use his feet to kick that leg off. He's got to free those legs or he's never going to get out. Frustration starts to sink in now, yes. Coach, because he's tried so hard to get out of this and blocking legs coming in, but they keep coming in now. He just came up a few Trevor, times and then got returned, and now he's back to that. Broke the plane. He's got a major decision for Melbourne if Stofi doesn't score from here. Stofi's in a tough position to try to score because freeing that leg on this guy is going to be difficult. Score will be 10 0. If you win by eight or more points, it's a major so decision. He's given his points. There's 10. So it's a major decision now. It was 10 0. Even if he escapes, it won't be enough. And it's going to end up 10 0. Travis Green, nice job well, by Travis Green. Green. Scored with his legs, which is what we said. He's got a nice set of legs. Really did. He, he, he went to his strength and did a wonderful job. Technically very strong with that leg in half. Milburn's on the board with a win. <laughs> and Travis Green is very happy. Sure. As you would expect. Good leadership by a senior, right? Come out there, get the job done. He's followed up with another senior, Francisco Marielli. Francesco Maroni. Maroni? Yes. And his opponent? Henry D'Agostino. And what year is Henry in coach, do we know? I'm pretty sure he's a sophomore, but I'm not sure. Okay. They didn't give me that name that here. But I know that Maroni's a senior. Mariel is a senior. I think he's new a, to the sport of wrestling. He's only been doing it since he moved to this country a year or two ago. He's from Italy. But nice. he works hard every day. He's always trying to learn new moves. Look at this. It's a nice technique there. With Little the fireman's dump. carry or dump. Physical boy. See? And again, the tone was just set by Green going out there, being aggressive, scoring some points. And now, next senior on the board trying to do the same thing. You know, people don't realize this is very much a team sport. People feed off one another. You know, confidence is contagious. Muriel covering that leg, but he's got to get a little bit more aggressive on top. He, Livingston's trying to get up, get his hips out. Looking nice. for a roll. Oh, Murley counters that well by just staying with him. He's looking for a claw, put him on his back. Coach employing him the knee slide, which would get his hips clear to the other side and allow him to get out. Muriel is pulling on that really uh, forearm, lifting. Again, back to that cross face that Milburn's always done so well. Far leg knee tap. Got him tied up there, coach. There's just one him. shot. Very tough position. Tough to fight off of. He's fighting through. Excellent from the bottom. Excellent fight getting off. Good technique by Maroli, knowing to give it up and come around back. He's up 5 nothing and still working on top. As the first period winds down, it's going to be 5 nothing Morelli from Milburn. <laughs> Milburn's choice. And they will defer. No going to first. Let me look it to his coach. Taking the defensive position, which is the bottom. Well, you know, Jerry Saxon and I always used to say what a misnomer that was being in the bottom, calling it the defensive position, because we want you to score from there. That's I agree. Yeah. We we always wanted to go on bottom and figured that was a place to score a point. Again, we're only going right back to his cross face. Agostino just trying to work his way up, trying to clear that leg on the other side to get out. You now, Bob, we talked about wrestling from our feet, the neutral position. But when you're from the bottom in that defensive position, that Mark Lombardi's worked very hard with his team over the last two years, what are some of the things you look to do with the bottom wrestler to well, create space to get out? Similar to on uh, when we're talking about our feet, you're trying to create an angle that allows you to get your hips clear and get you out. So on your initial stand up, you're trying to clear your hips away from them. When you're stuck on bottom, you're trying to keep kneeing across, kneeing under to get your hips clear, like the Livingston wrestler is doing now, trying to get them out, and the rolling keeps going back to cover. So creating an angle to clear your hips 
is how you're going to get out. But we're always doing a nice job of keeping all that weight on him, making it difficult for him to get his head up and get out. Carrying your opponent's weight, make him carry your weight. Team Maroy doing exactly what his coach is telling him to do, trying to turk the leg, which is lift it and step through. That brings the hips over and allows you to get the upper body over. Livingston doing a nice job of fighting that off. Getting single counts, no multiple counts. So you don't score unless you get multiple counts. That's correct. And that's, breaking, and that's breaking the 45 degree plane? Yes. And he got a couple one counts. He broke the plane a few times, but not enough to get any points. Now they get a fresh start. Bottom man is looking to, again, step up, clear his hips. Morelli's looking to break him flat. I think the strength showing right now, Coach. Morelli seems to be wearing his opponent down. It, it does look that way. Again, living, they're living. grinding the hips, grinding them down. You see him wear them down. A lot of heavy breathing going on with the opponent here. Good roll. Finishing up in the second period, Morelli managed to ride him the whole period. No change in points, but you could see the wear on the Livingston, the Agostino. He's gonna, Morelli's gonna choose to go down, looking to start scoring from the bottom. He's gonna look to build from his 5-0 lead. See if the Agostino can hold him down. Goes to the ankle, tries to break him down, try to break his point. Throw him, look Henry trying to throw that leg in. Interesting. Have you seen he's that in the practice room at all? He does throw legs periodically. They don't do a lot of legs, but they, they try to use him just to break people down, work a power half. See, he's got hip pressure now. He really needs to get his hips up and out. The Agostino's holding him in place, trying to bring the arm out, put it on his back. And doing a good it. job with it. A lot of he's pressure got a there. Now he's looking to see if he can't wear him down and score some back points. Now watch the full Nelson, be careful with him. Uh, the he's arm's on the back, so he's got... But he had the arm on the back, he gave that up to throw a half. I never understand changing your pressure. No. Young, sometimes they're just a level of experience, you don't think. Try different moves all at once. Maroli trying to build his base back up. Here to coach imploring him to build up. And he's back to that bar arm trying to get on the back. Agostino doing a nice job riding him, but he needs to turn him. He needs points. Yes, that's a good point. But again, he has no quit in him right now. He's still trying to score from the top. Looking for that pressure. Now, when does Mr. Quinn, the official, start to look at the bottom wrestler and maybe give him a warning? If he doesn't, you see, he does step up in time to avoid that. He kept his head down. They look to see if their head is down, if they're building a base. Morelli did score that. Now he's going to work on his takedown. And he came right back in. And That's what you're seeing Livingston do, but Morelli just did. He got his one, and he went and he right got back to the two. He didn't waste any time. And again, this goes back to what you said. He wore him down in another period. So he could stay on the attack now. And now he's back on top. Eight nothing, another looking towards a major decision for Melbourne. That'd be back-to-back -back major decisions, I believe, right? And they get it. They'll pick up four more points. Squirrel move up. 19-8, Livingston. Another hard-fought match. Maroli being the aggressor the whole time, comes away with the win. So, Sam Cohen and Max Lee will probably be next. At 152. Yes, sir. yes. Sam Cohen. Sam Cohen, Milburn, Max Lee, Max Lee, Livingston. Sam's a senior. Max is a junior. Have they met before, Coach? I believe they haven't because Max just dropped down from 160, and the county tournament is 160. So Sam was a place where I believe at 152, correct? Well, Sam took third in the districts uh, a, a year ago, the and this year, yes, three, you are correct. North he North North took North third in the North counties. Northeast. So this should Woodridge. be another exciting Once individual North match. He's got a career record of 64 and 32. Max is a three-year varsity starter. 
Should also, another good matchup. There is pizza in the hallway. There's pizza in the hallway for sale. Nicely built boys. There is pizza in the hallway. Small fact, I coached Max Lee's match. father. He was on my first we'll wrestling team. The oh. giant video <laughs> on the TV That's a big fact. Right in front of the scorer's table. So I tell people, Max takes me a grandpa of wrestling now. <laughs> nice setup. Nice double there by Cullen. Good fight off so far. He's got to run that or, or look for a trip. <laughs> Lee fighting the hands, fighting it out. Nice defense, goes right back to his shot. Right back in. Really a nice job by Max going right back in after he There's defended two, that. Two shot, two shot. Both, both of them going after here, I like that. That's important for him to go forward. He knows he needs to be the aggressor to be successful. Sam trying to set up that shot again. Steps away from that shot nicely. Sam's a good technician. I worked with Sam in the offseason. He came to all the practices. Good kid, good leader. He's got some nice technique, good work ethic. Not much time left in this period. It's a good chance it's going to end 0 0. Hard fought 0 0. Sam checking the clock and realizing. Both wrestlers very aggressive in that first mm -hmm. period. Well done. Some nice countering. Some nice initial shots. Lee given the opportunity, he decides it's 0 0, he's going to go down. And again, he needs to come up. Sam's looking to ride. He's right out in under three seconds. That's good for him. Sam will go back to work on his feet. Max working his head, trying to set his shots up. Turning the corner. Went, went, went for that front head. Cohen with the shot, he defended. Max defends with a front head, successfully scores two. Three nothing. Now he'll go to work on top, again trying to wear him down. Hard cross face there, coach. Yes. By Max Lee. Keeping the pressure on the hips there. Keeps that cross face, keeps working upper body, but keeps driving his hips down. And making Cohen carry his weight. And as we saw in some of the earlier matches, that can pay dividends later on. Bar, well, the ref would be looking to see if Max Lee, Lee does come off the hips a little bit. You can't ride the hips on top. You have to come out for those turns. Cohen is pushing his head up, but, if, but he has to work off bottom, and now top has to work for the fall, or they could get hit with Storm. Now, let me ask you something, Bob. Now, they talk about being out perpendicular to being aggressive to look to turn your opponent. Would you consider that perpendicular if you cover a leg still and you're out and looking to do an offensive move? Not really. There are some officials that would call that for stalling. Now, in this position, when you have the leg hook, but you're pushing it out, he's working for the fall. But he is still covering those hips, which is causing a problem for turning. He's going to go under the arm, try to lock on that wrist. The side. Ooh, there he goes. No, nope, he lost it. Get enough for the official to believe he's working for the fall. This is the ninth bout, right? Wow. Well, you, uh, we didn't start at, at oh, no, six. No, wait, we I'm started not at yeah, 13. Yeah, yeah. No, it's eight. One, two, three, like four, five, done. six, seven, eight. eight You're right. right. You have seven done, eight. We're in the eighth match. Okay. Here we go. Pick it up. Uh. So it looks like Cohen to show his bottom so he could get out quickly for one. Got a fresh start. So a takedown will tie it up. It's That's three right. to one. Let's see what they do with their foot footwork. Cohen's still on the attack. Losing to defend. He takes a shot. Cohen defending. Not a lot of action here. I really like that shot reshot that you're seeing from the Livingston kids. I'll be honest, I saw Cunio work that drill the other day with him. Had them drilling it just the other day. He wants chain wrestling. Cohen knows what he needs here. Seasoned wrestler, he knows he needs to move him and get his shot off. Coach, I noticed that Cohen seems to be shooting from a little bit far away 
against a wrestler like Lee. He's got to get a little tighter. He definitely does. He needs a setup, as you talked about before. He's got to move him and get him to a place where he can get to the leg. He's jumping from the outside, giving Lee the ability to defend. Two points, and he Lee. did, just what you mentioned. No setup, it's hard. Just can't come straight in like that without a setup. Again, Rarely, he gets a good wrestler. Especially since he sees somebody as tough as Max Lee here. He's not going to give you that shot. Now you saw Lee ride him out last period, and now you're seeing it show in Sam Cohen. Yeah, he's he's worn down a bit. It's also the emotional toll of that takedown making a big deal psychologically, yes. being down five, four points. As you saw the when the third period started, he jumped right out. He was ready to go. There's the dread of the headlock. Looking for something big. Knows he needs points. Lee keeping pressure, knowing he doesn't need a whole lot, but knowing he has to stay aggressive. 12 seconds, Sam needs to get something big. Well, Max Lee's gonna win this, coach. Very nicely wrestled match. Very good match. That last takedown, again, one of those matches, 5-1 doesn't tell you the match. Great match. And Livingston will pick up three points. And they'll go up 22 to eight as we're done with the eighth bout. And we'll move up a weight class. Moving to 160. That's correct. And I believe my, either Michael, Michael Left should Al be wrestling for Milburn. Michael Left it is, and Alessandro, Alessandro Zucchio will wrestle for Livingston. You know, coach, we instructed both coaches to tell the wrestlers to come over and tell us who they are. They've done a great job coming to the table, but they might don't be, go to us, they're going to the score. They might be, which is the norm. <laughs> it is the norm. We had a few come to us. Headgear came undone, so they quit the stoppage. Your coach telling him to get to set up that high crotch, to get him to step, which is what we talked about in the earlier match. You need to get him to step towards, you need to set him up. Michael Lepp said, third year varsity wrestler from Melbourne. Alessandro, I believe, is a senior. Not overly experienced, but he's aggressive. He's been learning a lot the last two years. I've only seen him in the room the last two years. Well, I years. gotta tell you something. You're not gonna survive in the Livingston practice room if you're not aggressive, from That's what I've seen. True. And again, that's the team sport aspect of wrestling. A little different match here. These two are just pushing back and forth. I don't know if we're going to see the level of technique we saw in the last match. Exactly. And you bring up a really good point because I watched the footwork of the other two and they had they had great balance. Watch the ankles here. Ankles are in trouble. Somebody knows an ankle pick, they can they can certainly achieve it. You see they're both flat footed, kind of just looking for something but not sure what. Again, an extended shot gives the advantage to the opponent. He may not get it here, but... Nice hip in. Very nicely done. Follow the coach's instructions if you hurt over your shoulder. He said hip in, he hipped in. He got his two points. It's two points off of... Throws Michael Lepp off his, off his base when you hip in like that. Goes flat and he had an opportunity to circle behind and get his two. All set up by what you talked about, the extended shot. A shot from far away. They're out of this <laughs> We like that. We always tell him, wrestle, wrestle till you hear the whistle. He didn't hear the whistle, so he kept wrestling. Picked up another five seconds of wrestling on that one, Coach, but that was good. Wore him down. Two seconds left. This, this period will end 2-0. See what choice. Okay, it is Milburn's choice. They seem to be deferring, and yep, Coach Marin signals over to Mr. Left to. Coach likes what he saw on his feet, so Livingston opted after being deferred to to go on their feet, try to get another takedown. You know, we talked about Livingston's first match against Raritan, 
it went about an hour and 45 minutes, which is unusual in today's world because there's so many pins. And this match is going quite a, quite Again, a ways too. Credit to both these coaches for starting to fill their lineups. You know, these are two teams that are pretty full lineups. And talking to Dr. Lombardi, that's one of the things he likes. You know, getting the lineup filled up, having JV guys, that's gonna build a program. And both coaches are doing that. They're filling their lineups. This, as you can see here, not the same level of technique, but two boys in there wrestling. That's what we want to see, right? They're competing. You exactly. look for people to compete. The rest will come in time. And you're right, you have two excellent coaches. They're technically sound. These kids will learn from them. Nice attempt at a single. He's gonna can't get Gotta have both hands on good, it though. Good defense. He held on to the wrist and won't get it with two hands on it. That was a nice defense there. Still two nothing in this pool. Interesting. Okay, coach, start thinking ahead. Say they get out of this round with a 2 nothing score of Livingston, you're Mr. Left. Where are you going? Well, for me, it's almost always bottom, but in his case, I think he would want bottom because then he could escape to get one and then look for two to get the win. Otherwise, you're playing for a tie if you go on your feet. Wow. Can't, get, slop can't get sloppy like that. Oh wow, they must like what he does on top. Coaches are going top. There's something we don't know about his ability Well, does he have the ability to throw legs or? He may also, since Livingston opted not to go on bottom, the coaches may be thinking there's a reason for that. And they're trying to maybe out think it. We will find out right here. And here they come, there's the leg going in. He's gotta bring him to the mat. And they're gonna stop oh, it. Still me. So if we can't get that out, he used to. What do we got the clock did ball. clock went one second. Fifteen? Okay. Malfunctioning of the clock. Ah, we think it's the second time today. We do. That one this time coach was making sure he paid attention to the clock. It's time the clock starts, and he's right up, trying to bring him back down. There's the cradle. And you're right, Coach Keenan, he's looking to take advantage of his length, either with cradles or a leg going in. He knew the coaches felt they'd have an advantage on top, and he's trying to use that advantage. He's looking to lock the hands. Livingston fighting off the hands, working to scoot his hips out. He's moving his hips, again, clearing them out. They're imploring him just to take the one and not try reversal. Gives him a 3-0 three three lead. Well, Michael Leff has to get aggressive now. I was gonna say, he, he needs need a takedown and some back points. Or, 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 or more. But again, we don't, if you're Livingston, you don't want to change. You get defensive, and that's how you get points up. You saw that in some of our earlier matches, that they stayed aggressive and stayed in the match. There's a nice shot. Nice shot, he knows he needs a takedown, takes a quick shot, uh, gives up the... Now what happened there, Bob? What are you looking to do? You're gonna gather that leg and then what? Get your hips underneath you. He got extended and was able to be spun behind. If you take that shot, you gotta get your hips underneath and get up off the mat. Get it. Get your opponent down. And there's an opportunity for... Now he's trying to defend similar to the way he was just defended against. Opponent's extended. He's looking to clear his leg and get behind him. And he does a nice job of clearing out. They may just want the one there. He's not gonna have enough time. They get the one, but it won't be enough, as you said. But hard fought again. He didn't quit. Get that one with five seconds to go. You're not quitting. You're wrestling. Hard fought bout, 5-1 Livingston. They'll pick up three more team points. 
course, 25-8. We go up to 170 pounds. Gatos Quintano, this is Livingston. Once again, there is pizza for sale this in the hallway. And at the conclusion of this Gilbert Livingston match, we would ask that all fans what please you say gravitate towards the middle of the far bleachers. It's not show. All wrestlers, please gather on the mat for the presentation of the Gentle Giant video. Thank you. I don't know if they supplied us with the name of this other opponent because Dennis Cho is out. He injured his neck in the last match. So they put a backup in for Dennis Cho against Stratos. Stratos had a nice run in the county tournament. Tristan German. Oh, this is Mr. German, yes. Ankle pick, very nice ankle pick for the Livingston wrestler. Tristan German. In the previous match, Quintanos went up to 185 to wrestle. This time they let him stay at his own weight. And he's been quite successful at this weight. Had a nice run in the county tournament. I believe he plays second as well there. Milburn opponent did a nice job fighting his way out. I don't know what year Tristan is. From Melbourne, Tristan Germa. What grade is he? Tristan. He's a junior. junior. He's, he's a, a junior. junior. Check with our scorekeeper. And uh, Quintanos is also junior with a nice cross leg pick there. He's going to go back to his feet. Listen, he's had two cross leg picks, ankle picks as we know him. Let's see if he goes for number three or if Tristan Germa has learned. Low shot. Likes that low. Nice come through there. Well done. Like the way he finished that. You'll hear, you hear a little more from Coach Grill during these matches because he works with the upper weights. So you see, you can see, take a vested interest. He works with these guys, you know what they can do. They do a nice job, as does Milburn, compartmentalizing. You got your bigger guys, you got your smaller guys, you got people working with them. You got Coach Marin on the other side, he works with the upper weights. People wouldn't realize that. It's very similar to a football team where you have different position coaches. You have a head coach who oversees the whole program, but you do specialize a bit, compartmentalizing sure. with different sizes and styles. Not that anyone can't coach each of the levels, but there is an advantage to a person that has wrestled at that weight class, at that or near that weight class, knowing certain techniques, knowing the way things work. Like, I was a career lightweight. I wrestle completely different than a heavyweight. So knowing how they wrestle is helpful. So having a guy that can help them is always beneficial. All right, so let's talk about that a little bit. All right, the lighter weights. Let's go 135 and down. Nice. He wrestles like a lightweight. Just yes, so he know. does. Because he, he takes shots. He keeps coming at you. Most upperweights we see with the collar ties and working their way in and shrugs. I believe your brother was very good with the shrug. He liked those upper body movements, those kinds of things. But you see him just coming at the guy, which is what you normally see the lightweights do, just attack, 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 stay on leg attacks. Right. A lot more leg attacks with the lighter weights. On the mat as opposed to getting the leg up in the air. He tries for a Certainly a different it. tempo. Normally. We're seeing a quite high, fast-paced tempo at this weight today. Hard cross face. Yes. He's got a minute. He's looking to work. Now some turns. He's up 10-4. What you just saw there is interesting. He tried a cradle that you and I would say you have to lock up. Penn State is turning their guys that way without locking them up. It's a, it's a little newer, but interesting that we're seeing it here. It's working. And then he changes to this. And a they, fall. They just talked about that the other day, and he did it to use it to turn him at first. Just pull him back. Fabulous. Well done. Very aggressive match. Six points. Give Tristan Livingston. a lot of credit going out there against him. Person like that taking Dennis Cho's place. Hard fall. Fans, please start to gravitate towards the center of the floor. 182. At the conclusion of this match, the center far bleachers. Yeah, Check those guys. So too, Milburn, right? Lee, and Haggerty at 182 for Livingston. Lorenzo, Lorenz Najar. And what years? Up from 60. We saw he's Lorenzo a, in the first match. Yes. He's a young kid. He's I believe he's a freshman here. 
maybe a sophomore, but he's just started in the sport, hasn't learned a lot yet, and you have a seasoned veteran here, very strong, up in his own weight class. Maybe a little much for this young man to handle, but we'll see. Liam Haggerty, fourth in the districts last year. He won the Carney tournament. He's just going right to his cradle, overpowering this. Again, young kid, still learning the sport. Difficult place to be thrown into. Clears the shoulder. And there's the fall. Six points, Haggerty. Quick 30, pin for Haggerty. 33 seconds into the bout. Six points for Milburn. Coach's job with the jars is to just not let him get frustrated. He's young, he's learning, he's just don't want to. This is Anthony Newman from Livingston, and they're they're forfeiting to Anthony Newman. One of the four we do see a forfeiting, we haven't seen that. They're forfeiting to Anthony to hold back their 220 pounder. So I think they're gonna bring out Noah Fan. There's Noah Fan. Noah Fan. He's a junior. Noah Fan's been coming along and works really hard. This is an interesting match. I would say there's not a lot of technique in either of these guys, but they both got a lot of fight. We'll see what happens. I gotta tell you, Coach Keenan, I'm impressed with how physical both teams are becoming. You know, big improvement by Milburn versus previous years that we've been seeing. And Livingston obviously is at a different level. Fan spent his whole first year, last year, coming out and just being pinned every match. And now he's been avoiding that, won a few matches, avoiding big losses. He's come a long way. All right, well talk to me about that, okay? As a coach, the overachiever, what you're just describing, somebody that can come back from, you know, week in, week out, you're coming to practice still, but you're not seeing the successes on the mat. How do you keep a kid like that out to make him feel like he has a chance to do something good in this sport eventually? That's a great question. And one of the ways is just celebrating along the way as they've done the, the small victories. Like you got pinned earlier the last time, hey, you fall, hey, you scored a stand up this time, that's better than the last time. You build on the little things. And, and I personally know Noah, and I've spent time with him, and that's what he gets excited about. The coaches say, hey, I did this last match, I did that last match. Fighting off that takedown is more than he's done before. So they're going to celebrate the small victories, and it's going to start to lead to full victories. He believes he can win now. That's a whole different wrestling. And once you taste that first victory, you're hooked. Yes. So they did a great job of keeping him on last year, despite what was going on. Now this year, he's feeling some of his own successes. He goes out there believing he could score. Noah still doesn't have a lot of technique, but he's got a lot of heart. He just scored a takedown and go up 2 nothing. And Militello is always wrestling a little heavier than his weight, so it's tough. He wrestled the last matchup at 220. He's more of a 195 pounder. Well, you know, there's so and much. And again, you notice Coach Marin working with the upperweights, as we said before. Talking more to Noah because he spent a lot of time with Noah. Coach Lombardi trusts him, allows him to step forward and help Noah out. Yeah, you're starting to see the big coaches get yes. off the bench a little bit. Yep. <laughs> the bigger men. You know, Bob, we talk about all sports and, uh, you know, you being so involved as an educator here in the high school. Wrestling really develops so many more things than just wins and losses. Oh, I totally agree. There's a whole, the whole character building. The whole reason that, you know, I love wrestling is what it does for the person. You know, they don't, I'm not always going to remember the matches that they won, but I'm going to remember the people that they were, or the people that they became sometimes. And it's a bond that you don't see in a lot of other sports. Real mutual respect as the years go on, and, and nobody really cares about the record. Yeah, you're impressed when you see somebody who is a state champion or, you know, an undefeated wrestler, but you have the same respect for the person that goes out and just does his best, but stays out. True. Quick story, last night I ran to Coach John Sachi at the Rutgers match, and I wrestled him for one year. Wasn't a great wrestler, but I spent time on a team. He came right up to me, remembered who I was, talked to me a little about that year, told me a little bit about what's going on in Milsons County. You know, and, and it's just, they people just remember you when you're a wrestler. It's just funny. He's coached thousands, and he still remembered who I was, so. That's the bond we were talking about, and the respect. Whether it's one year, just the attempt to do it, and stay with it, as long as you can. And you see the teammates 
paying attention and in these matches. You can see them on the edge knowing that he's, he's in a position to win. You know, I have to tell you, Bob, and you know this because we were both coaching at the same time, but I had the privilege of being involved with Mark Lombardi, our head coach. And, you know, I look at him, he was such a great, great wrestler, technically dedicated, gave it all. But I have to tell you, there was never a more humble and giving teammate than Mark Lombardi. He treated everyone the same in the practice room, whether you were at a little bit below his level or at the very bottom. And I can tell you, as somebody that competed against him, he was just as gracious to other opponents. He, he actually wrestled against the coach from Louis and Christiani. Never rubbed it in his face, beat him rather easily, never rubbed anything in his face. They became friends, they still work together. It's amazing the type of characters they both are. They're both getting excited about this match though, because these are young wrestlers that both need a win. We got a 2-1 two match. Again, I like the effort on both wrestlers. Fan needs to build on his lead by getting out. And Vincent, Vincent's got to break him down and turn him or let him go and try to get a takedown because he needs points. Noah Fan, Noah Fan has a nice future if he works hard in the offseason with you and others and hits the weight room. Big kid. Gotta be careful. He came over that split now. That's locked. That's locked. He's gonna look to drop him back. But he pull, rolls out of it. He doesn't, no quit on him there. The other guy's still got the leg, they're still battling. No, remember, started on bottom, so he's looking to reverse him here. Vincent's trying to hold on and not give up the reversal, either look for a stalemate or work his way back up. He's putting the other leg in with him. I don't know if that's wise right there, Bob. I think he's gonna pop right off the back and he shakes. Noah shakes a bit. Hey, looking to get that stalemate. It's going to be a stalemate. That might be the best yeah. yes you call that. That was the best that he could hope for then. Coach is talking right through that. Now they gotta keep going. Still a 2-1 match, one minute to go. You can see both coaches are vested in this. They know that what it means to the individual. The team score is not in there, but look at the look at the coaches. They're vested in their individuals. I love that. Well, I don't know how you felt towards the end of your career, but people have to realize when you're a coach, you're actually wrestling every single bout. It does feel like that. You're, you're pretty drained afterwards. He goes to the cross face the other way. Trying to know he needs back points. No one needs to go to get off the bottom. Well, with 35 seconds to go, Noah, again, just can't go to his back. If he doesn't go to his back, he should be okay. Now they know that time's running out, so they're going to look for the one. An escape and a quick takedown to tie it up. Very nice, aggressive shot. He gets his Noah fan in his hips clear. He transfers to a corner. double. Ten seconds. He's got, got the two. They got to tell him to let go. He doesn't want to get back. He locked. He interlocked. I don't know if that's truly locked because he was going to his back. It's an interesting call, but he gives him the point. So it's 3 2. The yeah. match is going to end 4 3. And they were seated four, instead three. of going. If you lock those hands when he's going towards his back, it's legal, but he was seated straight up. It becomes, it becomes a technical violation. Actually, a very astute call by Mr. Quinn, the official. I don't know if anybody caught it, but Coach Lombardi, who you don't see get too excited, was on the edge of the mat, letting him know that there was locked in. And it's going to end 4-3, and it's too bad. Great match. Too bad to end yeah. it that way, though, Bob, because that been, was a very nice shot by the Livingston. It would have been nice to go in overtime and let him win it on the mat. But I agree. you got to follow the rules. Yep. So we got one match Good. to go where well, we have a forfeited heavyweight. Then we go back to the we'll little go back guys. to the end of it, no which will be the first. Have to take that. No, I know you're worried. I, I agree with it. <laughs> Yeah, what the coaches are telling you is you need to let the guy, the wrestler know. They're not saying, but if you let the wrestler know, you got two, you got two. Well, is it the official's responsibility to, to verbalize that, Bob? Well, it's helpful to the wrestler. How would they know they got two and they're holding on thinking they're working for two? So they're not changing it. This is uh, Ryan, Zamara. Ryan Zamara is getting the forfeit. The Livingston heavyweight's out today. He hasn't wrestled at all today. And we'll finish up with Gideon Sartoris. 
Gideon Satoris at 106 for Milburn. Joshua Scher. This will be an interesting match too. He's their backup. Their, their, their normal wrestler is out today. He's a freshman. Gideon. Actually worked at him in the room the other day. He's very, very green, still learning. I think the advantage is Milburn here. This kid's been wrestling varsity all year. The other boy's new, wrestling You're right. JV. He has 13 wins, and he's a freshman also. The Livingston freshman that's out is uh, quite talented. It would have been a really interesting match. But they're getting him healthy for Monday's sectional match. Satoris coming hard to the mat. Uh, you certainly can see the pace of the little yeah, guys, exactly. even though they're inexperienced. the same thing you talked about. He's <laughs> going one move to the other, working right at it. He feels like he can get some big points here, so he's being very aggressive. Livingston working off the bottom, trying to stay tough. All that action, it's 2-0? Two 2-0. Nothing. Two nothing. All that movement, as you said. The big guys would be exhausted. Both, nice job by both wrestlers. Livingston coming up. The other one working to break him back down. Well, you know what? Livingston's gonna dominate and win this match, but it was a good match. Coach Keenan, and you're right. There's so much good progress going on with Mark Lombardi's team, and you can see that Livingston's a year or two ahead of them. But everybody competed today. Absolutely. Nobody just went out. We may get a fall here. And again, just the overall experience this year is a difference in this weight class for them. But. Oh. Head gears off, they'll stop for equipment. The two count. How many boys in the practice room for Livingston, Bob? About 28, 28 to 30, depending on the day. Now, in your, in your max, what were you at? We, we probably had 30 plus, 35, 36 at the most. We didn't always have big teams, but we were talking the other day, we always we had enough that we had to have two practices. They still fit in the, they all fit in the room. We had to have two different rooms. Doing a nice job of keeping the pressure on. Livingston just trying to fight off his back, not give up the six. Gideon keeping the pressure on. Going off to get into the second period. Three more backs, 7-0. Just Joshua Shear. Yep. Well, nice. Do you talk about the little victories before? That was a little victory. That exactly. was a big victory. When he comes back, the coach will talk about the things that he did right. Get him to be confident. Get him back in some JV matches. And let him win. Took a shot. Just being a little bit manhandled here. To a cradle. What I have to do, Coach, put that head in the you side and pop your the head shoulder, the right? Yep. Get that leg lifted up. There you the go. Tee up there. It's got to get that leg a little higher. And the, like you said, the shoulder underneath is over the top, so it doesn't get any points. Anymore. Joshua Shear fighting that off very nicely. Got to dig his knees underneath him. He's got his toes up in the air. That's where the ref should look at. Toes in the air doesn't mean you're working off the bottom. Got to get your toes in, get your base back. Running that half again, picking on the ankle. Need yeah, to have still a tight. Fighting off his back. Need to have a tight pinning combination. Going right back to that half. That half has worked for him, so he's trying that half. We haven't seen a technical fall today. No, we we may, may be seeing our first. Ooh. Nice return. Perfectly legal. Might have been locked hands there, but that's all right. Turning his shoulder over with that half. Power half, using two hands. He'll change to one if he can get the break to plane. He's really fighting that half hard, trying to get his head turned.
He's got to bump him, bump hard. He's got to, as Coach is saying, he's got to get his chest down. He's got to be chest on chest. He's passing, he's sinking back, then he's going to get him on his back. He'll get three, and he'll be one point away from a technical victory, which is 15 points. Fourteen nothing. Takes, takes, takes bottom. He's down. Yeah, they take top, knowing if he escapes, it's over. It's over. As opposed to getting turned under your back and possibly giving up a pin. So you, as a coach, you're willing to give him the, give him a shot to turn him and also let him get out for one save, and save. save a team point. Not that they need it, but it's but good it's just, conditioning. Exactly. Mental conditioning. We talk about Matt sense a lot, Bob. Understanding the situation under pressure. Sheer working hard, keeping down. And it looks now, like if Gideon's looking for anything, he would look to try to get something to take him right to his back to look for that pin. Otherwise, any points he scores will win the match. And that's going to do it, Bob. Like if he's he breaks that, that there's the two, and, and that that's it. Milburn will pick up five. 37-28. Not a bad match. Not a bad match. And a lot Coach of good Keenan. individual matches. So as we summarize this, Coach Keenan, you're right. A lot of good individual matches. Uh, Livingston a little bit more seasoned than Milburn. Very physical. Really impressed with the pressure, constant pressure being put on during that match. Nobody seemed two. to let up. There was never a, a break. Whenever Livingston got out, they didn't just sit back. They went right back in and scored with Milburn. At Milburn's this time, relaxed. we're going to ask that all wrestlers true. And if you look at Milburn, they did a lot of that in the matches where they're the more seasoned all the mats, and better please. prepared. They came out. We look want at the all wrestlers the way he on came the mat out. facing look at the TV Travis screen, screen and the way he came out. They're doing a lot of those things. The young guys are seeing that. And you see that come up when you get like Noah fans, seeing what they're doing, believing he can win. So you're seeing it there, just not to that point yet. If you can so Milburn and Livingston are just good too. slightly separate. All right, you see we're going to ask all teams to gravitate but towards right the match. Not a lot of growth. Center, though. Coach Kinnan, I really enjoyed this match. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And thank you so much for being part of this at the head table. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Oh, great time.